Hey everyone, my name is Quinn Cuslidge and I'm a professional VR developer and Unreal Engine expert. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through getting set up and running with your very first virtual reality project in Unreal Engine 5. I'm creating this foundational guide because I have a lot more advanced VR tutorials in the pipeline, and I want to make sure that everyone has a solid starting point before watching them. This tutorial is designed for absolute beginners, so whether you're just starting out or looking to brush up on the basics, this is for you. We'll start by connecting the MetaQuest 3 directly to our PC and getting everything configured so that we're ready to develop. After that, I'll show you how to download and launch a VR project in Unreal Engine 5. Once we're up and running, we'll dive into some key parts of the VR template. I'll break down how the grab component works, give you an overview on the VR pawn, and explain the VR spectator. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have your project set up and a solid understanding of how to navigate and use these essential components. The first step to developing VR content with Unreal is connecting our headset to our PC. I'm using the MetaQuest 3, and therefore I will need to download the MetaQuest Link app. The best way to get the MetaQuest Link app is to follow the link in my description. It's going to take you to this page, which has a, you know, essentially a quick start guide for installing this application and using it on your PC. Uh, this app has been around since Oculus was a thing, uh, and it is now obviously the Meta platform. But to download this application, you're just going to go to MetaQuest Link PC App Setup, and you're just going to click on that and it's gonna download it. And once that's downloaded, you can actually double click and install that to your PC. In order to use the MetaQuest Link app, you're gonna need to have some sort of Facebook or Facebook developer account. Um, most people have this, I know some people don't, but when you actually open the app on your PC, um, it's gonna ask you to log in with that. So I have it installed, I type in MetaQuest Link and I open it up. Uh, and essentially right where that loading screen is is where you're gonna have to log in. And then you have this great welcome screen, and this is where we're going to go and plug in our MetaQuest 3 for development. So we're going to go to devices, and it's got my headset here, but it's not connected. So I need to connect it to the PC. There's two options to do this. You could either use AirLink to connect your Quest 3 to your PC and use it that way, or you could connect it through a cable. And that looks exactly like this. I've got this extra long uh, USB Type-C cable uh, that plugs in directly to my headset. Um, and so I also added like a little Velcro strip right here that I fish the cable through and then connect to my headset and that way I, I, it never falls out or bothers me. And this is just the most stable way of connecting to the PC that I've found. Uh, and it's, you know, the least frustrating because you don't want to be developing something, you're trying to fix a bug and then your headset just constantly disconnects, which is, you know, my experience with AirLink. So I would recommend using QuestLink for this. So, I have my cable set up and ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that into my headset. Uh, when it comes to connecting a headset to your PC, what you need to do is go into the device setup. Um, and then you have those two options I was talking about earlier. There's AirLink and then there's Link Cable. So, I've plugged in my headset already and it is recognized by the PC. So, I'm going to go Link Cable. I'm going to press continue. Uh, basically, when I plug in my headset, this turns green. Uh, then I check the cable connection, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I would get an error here if there was. And then that's it. Now my device is connected, my controllers are ready to go, and I can start developing an Unreal, except for one simple thing that needs to be changed in settings in order for the headset to be recognized by Unreal as a device to push the game to. So we're going to go to settings, and then we're going to go to general and we're gonna to go to this option that says OpenXR Runtime. The reason that we do this is because back in you know the early days of us developing in Unreal, we usually use the Steam VR plugin or the Oculus VR plugin, and neither of those two things exist anymore. Now pretty much every headset uses something called OpenXR, and Unreal is very you know much in that ecosystem. So you have to use a headset that uses OpenXR, or you have to set your headset to OpenXR in order for Unreal to recognize it as a viable headset to use. But anyway, as long as this is set as OpenXR runtime, once we launch our Unreal project, it will work. Which leads us to the next part. Since our headset's set up, now we can download and launch Unreal. The best way to download and launch Unreal, in my opinion, is to actually go and download the Epic Games launcher. I've included a link to this launcher in the description, but essentially you're going to click on this install on Windows and that's going to start a download. And once that's done downloading, you're going to open it. 
and it's going to ask you to set up an Epic account. You can use pretty much any account to log into this. Uh, I just have an Epic account that I've been using since I started doing Unreal Development in 2018, and that's what I use to log in. Once you've created an Epic Games account and or logged in, you're going to see a page looking something like this. It'll take you to the store or the library or something else, and we need to go and install Unreal Engine. So we're going to go to the left-hand side of this page, and we're going to click the Unreal Engine tab. Once that loads up, It'll probably put you in samples or marketplace or something. We're gonna go to library, and this is where we actually install Unreal. So we're in our Epic Games Unreal Engine library, and we wanna install a new version of Unreal Engine, or our first version. We're gonna to go to this engine versions thing here in the upper left corner of the screen. We're gonna click plus, and that's gonna add in a new random engine spawner is what I like to call it. And we're gonna select the version that we want. For this tutorial, I'd recommend 5.4.3 because that's the one that I'm going to use, but you can kind of have it be whichever one you want. Now, Unreal takes a bit to install and it's actually a pretty big program, so make sure you have at least 92 gigs of storage. Um, if you don't have that and you'd like to actually optimize the install to make it a little bit lighter, you can click install and then you go to options where you're setting your path. And then you can get rid of certain feature packs that take up a lot of space. So one thing that I really never install with is um, starter content. A lot of times I'll get rid of a lot of these target platforms unless I need them. Note for quest development, you do need Android as a you know selected tab. Otherwise we won't be able to actually package from Unreal to the Quest 3. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind is that you can customize the install of this and make it a little bit lighter. Uh, and with that said, go ahead and click install and install that engine. And while you're waiting for Unreal to install, it would be super amazing if you subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. So our MetaQuest is connected to our PC and we have a fresh version of Unreal Engine installed. Now it's time to build our first VR project. We're gonna go into the engine versions tab right here and we're gonna select 5.4.3 and then we're gonna click launch. That's gonna launch our editor. Now that we have Unreal Engine open, we can go over making a VR project. We're gonna go to the Games tab, because this is where all the templates for games are located. And then we're gonna click Virtual Reality. We don't really need starter content, but you can have it if you want it. And then you wanna put your project location, put it somewhere where you have fast drive space, so that way it can actually, you know, load up correctly. And then give it a name. Uh, this one is just gonna be standard VR template for me uh, that I'm gonna use as kind of like my vanilla starter point for every tutorial going forward. So I'm gonna call it Vanilla VR. And uh, then we can just go ahead and create that project and load it up. So now Unreal is open and we've got our starter project. And this is what it is. We've got a map, we've got some cubes, some guns, uh, some basic audio stuff, and then some, you know, teleportation code. This is really simple, but it's a really great starting point for, you know, any project we want to make going forward in the future. You've now successfully created a Unreal Engine VR project. All that's left to do is test it. But we're going to actually test it, we're going to look at the capabilities that are available to us, and then we're going to look into the components of how they work so that we have an understanding of how these parts come together to create a VR project, and therefore it'll help us make our own VR projects and customizable code moving forward. So we're going to take our headset and put it on our head uh, and make sure that we're still uh, inside of the, you know, PC Oculus Home. It should be like a white background kind of thing. And then we're gonna go to the upper left corner of the viewport here, and we're gonna click this little three bar hamburger menu, and we're gonna click VR preview. And that's actually gonna drop us into uh, the Unreal Engine game. And you know, here's what we have. It's a very simple project. You have a pair of hands that do basic animations. Uh, you can teleport and it's a very simple teleport visualizer uh, that you just kind of aim and steer and then you can teleport to where you wanna go. On the left hand, you can actually rotate the entire pawn around uh, and then you can pick up cubes, pretty much any object that has what we call a grab component on it, which I'll go into a little bit more in a bit, uh, has this, but you can pick up these objects like cubes and that's a free grab object and then you also have objects that actually snap into place. So this one I can grab at any location and it'll just kind of attach to my hand that way whereas this one will always snap into the same spot no matter how much i grab it and then this also has some shooting functionality on it if you wanted to make some sort of gun in the future you've got the you know starter code for that and then kind of the last thing that's part of this template is uh the vr spectator and the vr spectator is you know essentially like a little i want to say it's a drone 
it, it allows you to view yourself from the third person perspective and you can actually move it around inside the editor. So someone could, you know, follow you around with this VR spectator or you could use it to showcase different interactions that you've programmed. That's what I use it for for the most time. If I'm like trying to show something off or I'm trying to talk to the camera, I'll actually use the VR spectator. And that's, you know, pretty much all of the functionality that is you know, consequential to us that's inside of this basic VR template. So let's go into the components that make this happen. The first thing that we're concerned with is the VR pawn. Down here in the bottom of the Unreal Engine screen, we have something called the content browser. This is where all of the code, all of the assets, pretty much everything that has to do with stuff in our project lives. Inside of this folder called VR template, and then inside of blueprints, we can actually find the components that make our character, us, uh, allowed to interact with the world. And the first and most important aspect of that would be the VR pawn. Now, think of the VR pawn as you. It is how you interact directly with the Unreal Engine world that you've created here. So when you start a level at this player start, essentially what it does is it spawns in one of these VR pawns. And this VR pawn is a really simple character component. It's got a camera, which is how you view the world. It's got hands, which is how you interact with the world. And it's got an HMD so you can see yourself uh, or like where your head position is. And those are all inside of this components tab inside of the VR pawn. And then inside of the event graph where you would write all the logic for any blueprint, you can see the logic for how this pawn, you know, interacts with the world. We've got our grab code, we've got our teleportation code, we've got menu toggles, we've got animation programming. Essentially, if you're going to be programming a way or a system that allows the user to interact with a world, it's going to go into the VR pawn. This will help you kind of break down interactions you want to create in Unreal and then know where to put them. But how do you know if you can actually grab an object? And that's where something called a grab component comes in. Now, blueprint components are super cool. It's essentially something that you can put code into and then add to pretty much any object to allow those codes and those functions to be used. So for you know grabbable items by the VR pawn, we have something called the grab component. And to make an object grabbable, all we have to do is add this grab component to that object. And I'll give you a demonstration on that in a second, but I wanna go into the grab component and explain how it works. A grab component is just a blueprint component. It's a class and it's got a bunch of logic inside of it that allows us to do different things. So try grab, try release, should, should simulate on drop and set physics. This is where we put in literally anything that has to do with picking up an object, dropping an object, throwing an object, doing anything with an object that is interacting with the VR pawn. So if you had a gun, you would apply how the hand grips and what rules apply to the hand while it is gripping the gun instead of the grab component, not in the VR pawn. So essentially VR pawn code is how the VR pawn interacts with the world and stuff like components and objects is how these objects interact with the VR pawn. It's super complex the way that I'm describing it, but you need to understand how these two things work together and why it's important to you know, know how to use them. So let's go into making a grabbable object right now as the final part of this tutorial, because I think it's important to know how to do and understand. So I think what would be best to add to this little table would probably be some sort of cone. So I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna pull in a cone. I'm gonna set its size to be significantly smaller than it is, probably like 0.25. Um, and then one thing about setting size, you can actually lock it to do a uniform scale. So yeah, this seems like a decent sized cone. And then I'm gonna take the material. Okay, well, we'll give it this like red material. I think that'll be best. So right now, if we were to try and actually launch Unreal and try and pick up this cone, nothing happens. I can still pick up these cubes, but I am not able to pick up these cones. I need to tell it that it's allowed to be picked up. And in the past, we would have to code a bunch of logic into every single individual actor to make that happen. But now we get to use a grab component and that's why it's so awesome. The Unreal Engine template is always changing and getting better, but let's make this thing grabbable. The first thing we're gonna do is actually simulate physics on it so that it, you know, it can be thrown and picked up and moved around. Um, it's a physics actor. And then we're gonna go to this little add component here and we're gonna type grab component. All right, 
So once we've added a grab component, we can set the grab type so there's snap free and custom. In my procedural grip tutorial, we actually add a new grab type and this is where it's located. Um, but we're gonna do a free grab on this cone so we can grab it any way we want. And so we've added that component and now we can test it out again. So I have my hands, I'm gonna go ahead and teleport over to the cone that I just created. And as you can see, because I've added a grab component to this cone, I'm able to pick it up just like every other object in the scene. And that's how the grab component actually works. As we move further and deeper into complex VR interactions on this channel, we're gonna be doing things like components and working with the grab component in VRPON to create more advanced interactions. And it's important to understand kind of how these things fit together in order for you to make sense of these tutorials. And if you want to change them or troubleshoot them if they don't work, uh, you'll be able to do that on your own without me, which is the goal. You have created your first VR project. You have an understanding of how some things go together and how they work. Moving forward with this project, you could go into procedural hand animations, which is a tutorial that I created a couple weeks ago. So you can follow along with that tutorial and it'll teach you how to create procedural grip animations for pretty much any object that you want inside of Unreal. And then coming soon is a Unreal Engine uh, thumbstick locomotion tutorial that actually is a recreation of the Half-Life Alex movement mechanics inside of Unreal. I spent the last couple weeks working on that and I'm just turning it into a tutorial now, so it should be out very soon. And then a couple other things offhand of Unreal Engine tutorials that I wanna talk about. I'm gonna start reviewing uh, regular and VR video games on this channel again. It's something that I really loved to do, and there's a lot I have to say about the current games market, as well as just past games that I really love. And there's a lot that we could do looking into different mechanics and perhaps even recreating you know, standard game mechanics in Unreal. And I think it's important to just talk about games. Also, some other cool news that happened recently, the developers of Into the Radio have sent me a game code for Into the Radius 2. So we're gonna be taking a look at the interactions that they've put forward for the sequel to a amazing VR game that they created a couple years ago. I'm really excited to look at it, not only because it's super exciting to be able to see someone else's you know, VR content while it's still in development early on, and you know, perhaps be able to give them some good feedback. But the other exciting thing about it is into the Radius and Into the Radius 2 were made in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 respectively, and that's the engine that we use to create our games and experiences. So looking at something that is, you know, a professional product that you can buy and being able to really dive deep into it and look at the interactions that they've created is gonna really help us as developers for Unreal, uh, you know, to, to see some cool stuff. I'm excited to do like a deep dive video into that. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting on my videos recently. Um, I love making videos for this channel. Please let me know what kind of tutorials you wanna see. I'm gonna need some ideas after I finish my Half-Life Alex series. So please just drop them in the comments of this video or any other videos that you watch and I'll organize them and figure out which one I wanna make next. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a good one.